Hello there, thrill seekers. I got a question on Patreon, and I'm going to read it to you. Hi, Brad. I would like to suggest the subject time and zen for a video. As time is an illusion, I'm asking how the duration of meditation, zazen, could be relevant. And without future, there is no opportunity to reach anything with sitting, zazen. This is a complicated question. And I have tried to address the subject of the Buddhist idea of time several times on this video channel and in my books and in other places. I'm sure if you do a search through this video channel for videos with the word time in the subject, you'll, you'll find a, a few of them. I don't remember how many I've done. The best places to look for information about the Buddhist view of time, well, for one of my favorites is uh, the Uji chapter. Uh, Uji means being time in Shobogenzo, which appears in book one of the Nishijima Cross version of Shobogenzo. It also appears in this book, which is uh, now published in a different cover, but Moon in a Dewdrop by uh, Kazuaki Tanahashi. It's, it's in here, a different translation, different cover. Sorry about that. There is a book uh, by Shinshu Roberts about being time. This is the the whole book is just about this one essay by Dogen, and it's pretty good. It, pr it goes through pretty much everything you'd want to know about what Dogen says about being time in great detail. But for my money, <laughs> the best book I think that explains Dogen probably better than Dogen explains himself. If I want to go really out on a limb, is each moment is the universe by Dining Katagiri. The folks who were students of Katagiri Roshi went through a bunch of his talks that had been recorded on cassette tapes or whatever they recorded them on and found all the ones where he talked about time and collated them into this nice book and it, it's really wonderful I, I honestly think he does a better job as i said of explaining dogan than dogan explains himself another book that i think is really good about time is the order of time by carlo rovelli now as far as i know now see i haven't gotten all the way to the end of this book but i've gotten three quarters of the way through it but as far as i know uh professor rovelli hasn't got any background i'm looking at his little bio on the back he hasn't got any background on zen or buddhism he seems to be passingly familiar with some of it but i doubt that he's read dogen or anything as deep as that he's a he's a physicist and the, the way he explains time in this book sounds to me a lot like the way Dogen explains time in Uji, only in a different sort of language. Uh, so I highly recommend this one for understanding time as well. But the specific question, let me read it again, was how the duration of meditation zazen could be relevant, and without future there is no opportunity to reach anything with sitting. Well, that's, that's true. There's no opportunity to reach anything with sitting because there is no future. Dogen is funny about the existence of future and past because one of his favorite phrases that he uses often is the moment just before the present. And he talks about the reality of the moment just before the present. And a few times he even talks about the moment after the present as being real. So Dogen acknowledges uh, past and future as something that exists. It's not exactly that they're not existent, but they aren't real in the way we think they are. Our conceptions of them are unreal, the same way as our, our conceptions of everything are unreal. That's a fundamental underlying principle in Buddhism, is not, for example, that the self doesn't exist. All the things that we put together in a box and consider to be the self you know, the individual self, they exist. Our opinions exist, our, our trajectory through time, through our lives exists, and, and so forth, and our appearance exists, and so forth, and so on, and all that stuff. But putting them in a box and then saying that this is an individual separated from the rest of the world is wrong. And Dogen talks about Uji being time as saying that being itself is time. To be alive or to exist in relation to other things is to be part of time. So time is not separate from me. So I am not an individual who lives his life going through time. I am time itself. Nisargadatta Maharaj often says that time and space 
uh, we do not exist within time and space. Time and space exist within us. And I think that's another good way of putting it. But when uh, my correspondent asks about how the duration of Zazen could be relevant, you know, just to kind of backtrack a little bit and get a bit less metaphysical about things and, you know, talk in terms of, like, stuff that people really deal with. When I was first practicing with Tim McCarthy, one of the questions I asked, which a lot of people ask me these days, is how long should you sit Zazen? And he would say, you know, start off with 10 minutes and gradually increase your time from there. And, you know, until you can build up your, your stamina to be able to sit for longer periods. I, uh, my advice usually is sit for as long as you can stand it and then add five more minutes. Because I think that last five minutes of sitting there doing zazen and absolutely hating it and wanting to be anywhere else but sitting on your cushion doing zazen, those, those, those minutes can be really important and really instructive. And maybe that would lead into what I say, because the other thing Tim had said to me is basically the more time you put into Zazen, the more you're going to get out of it. Now, I know that it is sacrilegious within Zen to say things like that, you know, and, and the canonical literature usually avoids saying things like that because you're not getting anything out of it. And as Koto Sawaki Roshi always said, Zazen is good for nothing and things like that are definitely true. But on the other hand, just to be quite honest with you, the more time you, you spend doing Zazen, the, the more of the whatever benefits there are to be had from zazen you're going to have it's just like anything else the more time you spend lifting weights the more muscles you're going to build the more time you spend running track the the better you're going to be at running track the more time you spend playing your your guitar or your fiddle or your sitar the better you're going to get at playing guitar or fiddle or sitar so it, it's just a, a fact of life that things go like that I've also noticed that there is a difference between sitting Zazen, as I recommend most people to do once in the morning and once in the evening every day as a routine thing, and actually doing a concentrated practice where you'll take, you know, a two days or three days or five days or seven days or 90 days sometimes in some cases out of your schedule and just devote yourself to Zazen all day for, you know, a, a a period of time. In our retreats, uh, of which we're going to do our next one in, in November in, in Mount Baldy, all God willing, we're, we've got uh, our reservation in and everything, um, we uh, sit for, gosh, I don't even know how many hours per day, but you get up uh, at about six in the morning, or five something in the morning, and then basically you're devoting your yourself to Zazen all day until about nine at night, but that doesn't mean you are you know, constantly sitting zazen for all those, you know, for all those hours. But most of what you're doing between 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. is zazen. Uh, you're doing a lot of zazen. And I've noticed that there is a, an effect from that concentrated practice that you just don't get uh, and when you're sitting by yourself, you know, once in the morning, once in the evening. So I highly recommend that people do that. Why is this relevant if time doesn't exist? Well, because time does exist in a sense. Time is being. Time is you. So the more of your life that you dedicate towards doing zazen, the more zazen is going to seep into you and the more you're going to become zazen. You know, as, as, uh, as they say uh, in Soviet Russia, you don't do zazen, zazen does you. Actually, it's one of these uh, cliche phrases, you know, you don't do zazen, zazen does you, but I always think of Yakov Smirnov anyway. But, and if you kids out there don't know who Yakov Smirnov is, uh, <laughs> go look him up on the, on the YouTube, you can see him. Oh, a comedian from Russia. Anyway, the more you do zazen, the more sort of benefit you get. However, it's not a benefit because you are just experiencing things as they are now. I think time works into it because you uh, have devoted, like all of us, uh, we've all devoted a lot of time to becoming very much familiar and very intimately uh, familiar, again, sorry to use the same word, with 
one way of understanding reality. So we go to school for, God, you know, uh, 12 or, or uh, 16 or 22 years or however long you decide to devote yourself to going to school and you're absorbing this worldview that, uh, that academics and people have figured out and well-meaning parents and things have figured out. You watch television, you're getting it there. You, you read a book, you're getting it there. Everything you do is absorbing this uh, very specific worldview and reinforcing it. So when you take time out of that to do zazen and let all of that go and don't absorb any more of that worldview, you're not necessarily pushing it away, but you're not taking any more of it in. Instead, you're doing this crazy thing of just sitting very still and looking at a wall and not listening to any anyone teach you anything, uh, just just absorbing what it means to be alive in this very moment you know, through the through the process of sitting sitting very very still and not allowing anything to to disturb your your peace, or if it does, you just kind of let it go. That can, is a way of dismantling a lot of stuff that you've spent a lot of other time putting together, and so it's kind of uh, using time to untangle time. That sounds very Zen, doesn't it? Uh, I just made that up. But it, in a way, I think that's true. You're using time to untangle time by doing a lot of Zazen. So so putting in a fair amount of Zazen, a good amount, a strong you know, sitting practice is, is very good. And just in case people want my practical recommendations, I would say that your best course of action, if you're going to you know, involve yourself in Zen practice would be to do your practice every day, just every day. Don't skip a day. If you've only got five minutes to devote to Zazen that day, still do that five minutes. You know, don't go, well, I only got five minutes, so I'm got, not going to do it at all. Do do the five minutes. But, you know, I, I do an hour, between an hour and two hours every day. That's my habit. It has been my habit for a while now. But, you know, not everybody has the time for that. Just do as much as you can, but do it every day. And at least once a year, uh, try to attend a retreat. That, that would be my recommendation. Find a retreat of, uh, we, do, we, do, we do three day retreats. We call them three day retreats, but actually it's a half a day, a full day, another half a day. Actually this year we may change that, we'll see. But uh, you can find those fairly easily around you know, different places if you can't come all the way out to Mount Baldy. And uh, do that once a year, uh, at least once a year. And I think that helps kind of charge your practice up and get it going a little bit better. So that's my recommendation, and that's what I can tell you about time. And I probably haven't unraveled the, the wholeness of uh, what Zen view of time is, but that's a little bit of it, and I hope it helped. If you want to help send me some money to do some time and things like that, you can send it to this URL you're seeing on the screen below. That's my only way of making a living. I really appreciate those of you who do donate, but if you don't have the money to donate, or if you just don't want to donate, just you don't have to donate. It's not an obligation, but I do appreciate those of you who support me because that's how I make it all happen. That's how I buy Ziggy food and everything else. So we will see you later. Have a good time all the time. Oh, that's time again. See you later. Bye.